What's up, everyone? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Rufaro. Today, I've got my girls here with me again, and we're discussing a very exciting topic for us. Just wave a little bit, ladies. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about parenting while abroad. And I keep getting asked questions about how things are when you move with your children, the difficulties and some of the challenges that you face when you decide to relocate with children. So today I've got two of my closest friends with me and then we're just going to go through some of the questions that you guys sent me. And then I hope that you can be able to get some sort of value from this. So I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves. Let's start with Tafadwa. Okay, hi guys. My name is Tafaz Gongaru. Um, I'm based in Canada in Alberta. I'm married with two children, both girls, six years old and three years old. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm a mom of three. I'm based in Sydney, Australia. I've got three under six. So my daughter is six. Then I've got two boys, three and one. So how long has it been since you guys have relocated? Um, we've been in Canada for two years now. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm almost, yeah, same here. I think this is our third year. So I was the last one to relocate. <laughs> Tafi and I actually talked about it. I remember when you were looking to move in. Do you still remember? <laughs> I remember asking Anna and I was like, how is it? Um, and she yeah. was like, you know what? You have a house here up in Zimbabwe. You need to appreciate that. Yeah, true. I hear you. So how long did it take for you, Anna, to sort of adapt to, to the whole new country and everything else? Almost a year. It was difficult. I won't lie to you. I was homesick a lot of times and i think what made it worse for me is when i got here two months later so initially i was like career wise i'm going back to work you know when you've always wanted to like explore you're like that's where i found opportunities here i come and then when i got here i found out i was pregnant two months later <laughs> it changed everything oh. so i literally took my pregnancy test first second third i was in denial and I'm like, I'm done having babies, you know? And then you find it's positive. So it changed a lot for me, a lot. But yeah, yeah the idea was- For your children to adapt. So for my children, it was, it was almost a year also because of the different changes that they went through. Um, like school and everything, it was it was a lot. Um, For my kids, it wasn't that difficult for them to adjust. Uh, from what I think, uh, children do adjust much faster compared to us adults. That is it so was true. Like, it wasn't a smooth transition, but it was not as difficult as us. They quickly okay. adjusted. Yeah. I think that's the thing yeah. with children. They quickly make new friends. They also quickly forget that sort of thing. But for me, it was very hard. I remember for them, was it, it's almost been a year since we've relocated. And for my oldest daughter, Caitlin, it took her, I think the first six months, she would always ask, when are we going back to our old house? You know? Mm. So you can tell that, well, she's older. She was, she was a little older, you know? And she, she just kept on asking and she was having a hard time letting go. She wanted to see her grandmother. She wanted to see her friends. She missed her teacher. And I'm like, what, what did this teacher do to my child? My child is obsessed with her teacher, <laughs> you know? And she kept on asking. Mm -hmm. and um, But now... She, she sort of adjusted and you can tell that kids do really adjust faster. And I was actually worried about her when she went to school, about making new friends and learning a different language. But now she even says words that I don't even know what they mean. And I don't even know if it's Tutu, it's Tupana, it's Zulu, because she's learning stuff. <laughs> but in terms of adjusting, Tafazo, you're very right. Kids do tend to adjust much faster and much easier than us adults. But I guess for me, it was different, Pakuti. My kids had been taught Shona, like my kids just knew Shona. So when okay. he came here, and even their cousins could not speak Shona, even her age mates couldn't speak Shona, very family, you know. So even when she was wow. trying to have a conversation with them, and she'd be like, that not Tambai, you know? And they're like, what are you saying? So yeah. <laughs> So she's like, I literally have no one to talk to. So I was always the translator. So you know uh -huh. how it is. Like, people get irritated. It's like, uh -uh. She's now just tagging along. 
you know oh, i don't okay. know but yeah, like you're saying kids are just fast she learned really quick how to mm-hmm. then speak english even though it was broken now if you hear her shana is not the one that's broken the english is the one that's better so <laughs> kids you can never know okay so when it comes to Yeah, for us my daughter's teacher actually told us that you need to continue speaking with her in your home language mm. in your native language so that way mm. she doesn't forget. At yeah, school they're talking English uh wherever they are anywhere else they're speaking in English. So at home mm. we always try our best to speak in Shona. Speak in Shona. Even though it's now broken for them but <laughs> <laughs> they they can still understand what we are saying to them <laughs> sometimes they'll be asking what does that mean and yeah, life take, goes on yeah. exactly but i think mm-hmm. that's one of the most important things for you to just try and make sure that in terms of the changes they're not too much to the extent that they really like negatively impact your child and your child needs to be able to retain some of the normal things that they've always been doing so what were some of the culture shock moments that you had when you relocated as far as parenting goes the idea that people here speak back to their parents i thought oh, like pulling them yes. you know like when you look at a child and then they say no i'm not doing this hey, did you like exactly. that the boss i had to say no come back. Back. what bossy one yeah i hear you there yes and unfortunately because your child starts playing with them uno na some of the habits starts you know coming in the house where they are throwing tantrums because you gave them salsa and they want rice you know little things like that and we are raised where you know you, whatever you is put is, is what you eat yeah yeah and you finish your food yeah until yeah, yeah, you, you know your food. Food. that's it you can't force them to eat <laughs> Yeah. I think that's one of the biggest challenges even here when it comes to you know the, the fact that children actually know their rights and they speak back and they do all sorts of things. Then you have to strike a balance between trying to give your child independence and mm-hmm. then having to say okay fine I, I'm not your friend there's a boundary between me being your parent being your mother and you being the child. And I think for me in, in terms of parenting as well some of the culture shock things that I've seen is how people here they're very comfortable with letting their children speak to strangers you know back home mm. this thing, yeah that sort of thing where you're told from the time when you when you still a little child that you don't speak to people that you don't know here people mm. in here they have this culture of kuchikuing children when you're in the mall strangers you know like they just come up to you and they say oh your child is so pretty or your child is so beautiful then they start talking to your child how is it okay for for strangers to think that it's okay to just come and say hi and talk to someone else's child and the parents don't seem to mind so for me in terms yeah. of parenting and culture shock that thing of stranger danger and having your child of course talk back at you because yes they they do talk mm-hmm. back at you <laughs> yeah also the issue that um you're not allowed to beat children oh yeah <laughs> thanking i used to spank them then um one of these fine days uh one of the teachers called me and said uh so this is what Tasha told us she said that she's wow. thanking Nicole Ooh. and i'm like did she really say that then <laughs> <laughs> the teacher was like you know what i understand sometimes you're just trying to you know discipline a child but mm-hmm. with the rules that we have here in Canada you have to be very careful because imagine if she was telling someone else how was that That's going so to yeah oh my gosh you reminded <laughs> me of when we first arrived i was on the bus with anashi and then i'm also one of those who stanks and she was being naughty and i said to her do you know kuroba in shona and get what she starts saying mama is going to beat me <laughs> like this is like in the bus and i had to say shit like you are such a bad mother yeah ah uh, and then they're like oh no she just and i'm like uh uh-uh, uh no i didn't say that you know but my cousin <laughs> gave me a great mm. tip where she says um just say chaya baby chaya so you you know you usually <laughs> put the face of saying i'm going to beat you so she said do it nicely and just tap the cheek and say chaya baby so now yeah that's the challenge that comes with this cultural thing 
Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah. And, and recently, South Africa, they actually passed the law and you're not allowed to, to spank children anymore. And for me, you know, it's, it's something that when, when we're growing up, it's like you don't know any other way to discipline your yeah. child if you're not spanking. Mm. And if, mm. you, and if you feel like, you know, and it even goes back and you're told, like, when you're raised, yeah, spare the road. Uh, if you spare the road, you Bible, then you spoil your child. So all those things that have been sort of cultivated in your mind for, like, mm. 35 years of my life. And now, as old as I am, I'm being told that is wrong. You can't do that. Mm. So you then have to find new ways of sort of disciplining your children. So what are you guys doing to, like, what, what are the new tricks that are doing to sort of discipline your children? <sighs> For me, not even time out works. So I'm waiting <laughs> to hear from you guys. <laughs> what are you doing? Girl, I do both. Like, okay. I, I do the talking. And if you go beyond, like, if I, there's some things that are still just not acceptable to say okay. you need to know. And I think also depending on the personality of your child, there's some kids that if you tell them, no, this is not right, they actually understand. I've got a strong-willed child and she needs to understand the reason and she can decide, you know what, even though you said that, I'm going to do something else. So, But what works these days is the I. Like I've tried what our parents used to do, the I thing to say, even when we visit and she's naughty, I tell her, if we go there and I give you that I just know when we get home, it's another story. You know what I mean? Because that must time out corner thing does not work. I tried it. It didn't work for me. So, yeah. But I try to have a conversation. I don't, like, say every day there's a spanking and whatever. Because this side, they say you're loud, but you shouldn't leave a mark. Yes. Oh. Uh, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think for me, as far as spanking is concerned, I, I always feel guilty like afterwards, you know, you spank your child and oh. they start crying. You know you, you did it for the right reasons so that they know they mustn't do what they did again. But as a parent, you know, for me, I don't know, it always makes me feel bad afterwards. I feel like, okay, I need to find a new way of doing this because I can't bear to see them cry. And sometimes I want to, be, I want to give them a hug, but I'm thinking if I give them a hug, then I feel manipulated. <laughs> you know, it's sort of thing. So I always try not to, you know, to, to, to spank. So for me, Naughty yeah. Corner, like what you're saying, has not helped. Um, but mm. one thing that has definitely sort of made an improvement is taking away the things that they love. So my, my like for, for Caitlin, she's obsessed with the iPad and TV. So mm. if I say time out, you're on punishment, you're not watching TV or you're not having your iPad, for her, it's like I've cut her arm off. She gets so devastated. And then I know the message <laughs> sort of sank in, you know, because I feel like sometimes when you, but there, there, there should always be a sort of like a boundary as far as spanking is concerned. If you spank them sure. too hard, you like, or too yeah. often, they get used to it and they're like, ah, okay, mm -hmm. I, I got a spanking. Yeah. Mm. That's true. Beating them daily just doesn't work. Like I've also realized just from moving that it's good to have a conversation. We didn't have that. We were just told, stop it or I will beat you. So it's always good to at least have a child understand, Scooty. The reason I'm telling you to stop this is because it's it because. will result in this. Can yeah, but the thing is, don't know. Yeah, but sometimes they just understand for that time. Then tomorrow yeah. is back to square one. Mm. Well, children at this age, they sort of test you, you know. Like yeah, the training. See how far they can push. To see how consistent you are. To yes. see how so if you're inconsistent, then definitely you're going to have problems when it comes to that. And I guess it, it also comes back to, 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 to finding something that works. And you find that as far as discipline is concerned, what works now will not work a year from now. So you have to, keep, yeah. you, have, you have to stay on your toes and come up with ideas as you go. So what are you guys doing to, or if you're making any efforts, sort of have your children... Uh, stay grounded in their, you know, in their native cultures or, yeah, in, in their African roots. Are you doing any of that sort and why? Well, oh. I, will talk to la I will talk about language. Uh, most times when you're home, we talk in Shona. We speak in Shona. Okay. Uh, I can't think of anything else that I can say it will help them relate to our culture because really, um, okay, we do cook sadza every like once a week 
and they love it. So <laughs> for us, it's uh, Shauna. So because I'm a homeschool mom, I homeschool my kids. So I've added Shauna in their curriculum. I also wow. added like Zoom history so that they know where we come from. And because I'm I'm Shauna, the dad is Changani. So I try and do both to say, you know, just so you know where you come from. Because just from moving here, I realized a lot of kids suffer from identity crisis. So I realized mm. it's so important for them to know where they come from. But if it was up to my daughter, she'd be back in Zoom. So we're trying to make sure that she still stays. She, she loves is- Zoom. Like, I don't understand. She wants to oh be with her mom. For me, if you tell my child, stop it, or I'm going to send you to Zimbabwe, she'll be like, no, you are going to Zimbabwe. I will stay here for myself. <laughs> for, me, uh, for, for me, I think I've always struggled with this thing, but now I'm sort of having a different perspective. And when it comes to you know teaching my child Shona and making sure that they remember the language, I honestly didn't prioritize it. I just thought, like, you know what, they're not going to need it to get a job. They're not going to need it, you know, to, to get to university. So if they can understand when someone speaks to them and they can't respond, I, I don't mind. But now when you've moved, like what you're saying to Fatsu, in terms of identity crisis and making sure that, you know, your child doesn't have that confusion. Because when mm. I, you, you, you see it a lot, like um in the social media it, platforms and stuff like that, people don't know who they are, you know? And if mm-hmm. someone goes through most of their life and they're, and they're having those identity issues, they struggle to fit into society. And in South Africa, you know, culture is something that's very important. There were nine official languages, but they're all celebrated and everyone knows who they are. So you find that I've also realized how important it is for my child to, to have that sort of consistency as well. I also think you can tailor make it by doing something that he used to do as a family. Like, example, those games he used to play, Anadunu, Nodo, you know, yeah. we've lost that thing. But it's things we used to enjoy that kids would love. Like going outside to do Chisheru, you know, those mm-hmm. were things that made us who we were. But now moms will be like, ah, I don't want to get dirty, you know. But imagine what it will mean to a child to actually know those things. You remember that? I, I tried to do it. <laughs> I try to do Amina with my kids. Uh, I guess I up. didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> you keep that trying. Mean? Keep trying. Like really keep trying. Keep I'm trying. trying. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that we need to work harder and with so that we make sure that our kids have got some of those things that they really connect with. You know, if they're told where do you come from, I come from Zimbabwe, what do you guys do there? What do, what type of food do you eat? You know, so that they they, they sort of keep that in mind. For me, at least, at least, yeah, we still have, we're still in Africa. So, in terms of having an African culture, my children will have an African culture. And in terms of preparing African meals, I've got access to a lot of, you know, African foods that I can always prepare here. Okay, so, what are you guys doing in terms of, you know, having your children staying connected with loved ones back home? You know, your sekurus, your ambuyas, the grandparents, your the aunts, and stuff like that. Huh, what's what up, Yeah. Okay, because yeah. I think we have. Cool. I think what's and important. I wish we were. Yeah, I, wish I think we were like. Because <laughs> I think for me, my yeah. mom is saying, so you know, I don't want your kids to grow up without knowing me. So the effort yeah. for me to, to always try to make sure that um that they remember or they know what Google looks like. So like what you're saying, you, you do your video calls, you do your WhatsApp calling. And really, that's the best that you can do. 